You've had a tough life. I, I, I read quite a bit about you, and uh, have you, do you have any scars anywhere? Have you been maimed in the years that you've... You, you know, bummed, as they say, bummed this around. This isn't always what makes a life tough. In the realm of infamous figures, one name stands out with an awe of mystery and controversy, Charles Bronson. Known for his tumultuous life and notorious reputation, Bronson has captured the imaginations of many. But what if I told you that behind the veil of his notorious persona lies a truth so astonishing it will shake the very core of your emotions? Today we delve deep into the enigmatic world of Charles Bronson, but not through his eyes. Instead, we embark on a journey guided by his daughter, who dares to reveal the untold stories hidden beneath the surface. Prepare yourself for an emotional roller coaster as we uncover the layers of Bronson's life, exposing secrets that defy expectations and challenge perceptions. Really, life. Born on November 3, 1921, in the cold dusted embrace of Ehrenfeld, Pennsylvania. Imagine this the 11th child in a family of 15 Charles emerged into the world amidst the rugged landscapes of Pennsylvania's Allegheny Mountains, a Roman Catholic with a Lithuanian heritage. Now, here's a twist that sets the stage for a captivating narrative. His father, Walter Bukinski, wasn't just any coal miner. No, he was a Lipkatata from Druskininkai in southern Lithuania. Bronson's mother, Mary, a product of Pennsylvania's coal region, carried her Lithuanian roots proudly. Growing up, Charles' childhood symphony wasn't in English alone. Lithuanian, Russian and Greek danced through his home. A true linguistic maestro, don't you think? Even in his soldier days, his accent was so thick that comrades mistook him for a foreigner. The man spoke not only the language of war, but also Lithuanian, Russian and Greek, adding layers to his fascinating character. In a candid 1973 interview, Bronson let us in on a secret he didn't quite understand his father. Love or hate, it was a mystery shrouded in childhood memories. Whenever his mother announced his father's return, the kids would vanish like shadows. Tragedy struck in 1933, his father left, and Bronson found himself in the coal mines. A dollar for every ton of coal extracted that was the price of survival. Imagine those cramped tunnels, the smell of coal lingering in the air, and the toll it took on him. Hands worn and scars etched on his body, the echoes of those six grueling years would haunt him. But the story doesn't end there. Extreme poverty during the Great Depression cast its shadow, leaving the Bronson family hungry and struggling. A heart-wrenching moment his sister, deprived of milk, sipped warm tea instead. In a poignant snapshot of hardship, young Charles once donned his sister's dress to school due to a lack of proper clothing. Yet, against all odds, he became the first high school graduate in his family. As the coal mines released their grip, Bronson enlisted in the United States Army Air Forces in 1943. Picture him as a Boeing B-29 Superfortress aerial gunner soaring through the skies with the 61st Bombardment Squadron. Combat missions against the Japanese home islands, 25 flights, and a Purple Heart the war left its indelible mark on him. Fascinating, isn't it? The roots of a Hollywood icon planted in the rugged coal mines, blossoming into a hero soaring through the clouds. Charles Bronson, diverse journey post-war. After the war, mister, Bronson didn't confine himself to a single job. Oh no, he ventured into a myriad of endeavors, from laying bricks and flipping burgers as a short-order cook to trying his hand at the peculiar task of picking onions in the bustling streets of New York. If that doesn't paint a picture of a man unafraid of embracing diversity, I don't know what does. And that was just the beginning. Post-World War II, Bronson found himself entangled in a web of odd jobs. However, fate had grander plans for him. A theatrical group in Philadelphia recognized the untapped potential in the rugged war veteran and hired him to paint scenery. Little did they know, this seemingly mundane task would serve as the gateway to the mesmerizing world of acting. The shared apartment in New York City with Jack Klugman, an aspiring actor of the time. Eventually, the winds of destiny whispered to Bronson, leading him to Hollywood. Enrolling in acting classes at the prestigious Pasadena Playhouse, he laid the foundation for what would become an illustrious career. Now, 
Let's rewind the cinematic reel to the early 1950s. In those formative years, Bronson went by the name Charles Buczynski. His debut on the big screen was a humble, uncredited role as a sailor in You're in the Navy Now 1951, directed by the maestro Henry Hathaway. You beat up four men, you put one of them in sick bay, and you've got nothing to say? They, they said I'd take a bat in a distilled water. Fast forward to 1953, and Bronson showcased his versatility in House of Wax playing Igor alongside the legendary Vincent Price. To prepare for his role as a mute character, he even took a course in sign language. The film's success reached the fourth spot in the highest box office that year, making a whopping $23 million. In 1954, amidst the House and American Activities Committee proceedings, a significant change occurred. Bukinski transformed into Bronson at the suggestion of his agent, who foresaw potential career damage due to his Eastern European surname. Bronson's journey through the cinematic landscape continued with roles in films like Riding Shotgun Apache and Drum Beat the Year 1955 witnessed his presence on television, leading in an episode of the anthology drama series DuPont Cavalcade Theatre. Venturing beyond the silver screen, Bronson dipped his toes into television, making appearances in Alfred Hitchcock Presents and Have Gun Will Travel the diversity of his roles showcased his acting prowess, earning him a special place in the hearts of viewers. In 1958, he embraced the lead role in Roger Corman's biopic Machine Gun Kelly despite its shoestring budget. The film caught the discerning eye of the renowned French actor Alain Delon. Intrigued and impressed, Delon extended an invitation to Bronson, leading him to star in A Duel Ami and marking the beginning of his triumphant journey across Europe, marriages and family bonds. Charles's journey in love began with his first marriage to Harry Tendler, a fellow aspiring actor he met back in Philadelphia. Can you imagine they were just young dreamers back then? Despite their different backgrounds, she, a Jewish girl from a dairy farming family, and he, a Catholic, with a coal mining past, they embarked on a journey together. Harriet, just 18, supported them both as Charles pursued his acting career. It's remarkable to think that on their very first date, he had just four cents in his pocket. Yet destiny had grander plans, who later transformed into the iconic Charles Bronson, one of the highest paid actors in the nation, now let's fast forward to another chapter in Charles's love story. He found lasting companionship with English actress Jill Ireland. Their love story is quite extraordinary. They crossed paths in 1962 when she was still married to another actor, David McCallum. Talk about fate, right? It's said that Charles even told McCallum, I'm going Finn to marry your wife. They did tie the knot in 1968. Their home in Bel Air was a bustling haven for their seven children, blending their families seamlessly. With two children from Charles's previous Three marriage, from Jill's including one adopted and two of their own, they built a beautiful family together. Their bond was so strong that they made sure to keep everyone close, often taking their brood along wherever filming called. Imagine the adventures they must have had. Their love story wasn't just confined to the silver screen. Jill often shared the spotlight with Charles, starring alongside him in 15 but films. But their love wasn't just about work, it was about family too. They cherished moments together, whether it was at their colonial farmhouse in Vermont or enjoying the snowy holidays in Colorado. Yet life had its share of challenges. In 1990, tragedy struck when Jill lost her battle with breast cancer at just 54 years old. It must have been a devastating blow for Charles and the entire family. But even in her passing, Jill's legacy lived on. In a touching tribute, Charles's life was depicted in the television for film Living the Jill Island Story, a testament to their enduring love. After Jill's passing, Charles found love once again. In December 1998, he married Kim Weeks, an actress and former colleague who had been a part of Jill's journey. Their love story, though brief, added another chapter to Charles's colorful life. Winston Churchill. Yeah. Now, there was a boy living a tough life. Even though he had a great no deal of money. No scars, nothing, but there, there, you know. Yeah. That's yeah. a tough life as well. Life beyond the silver screen. Charles Bronson, not just a tough guy on screen, but a living legend His off screen. His life was a roller coaster of intense moments, some of which were more dramatic than the movies he starred in. In his early years, Charles's face carried tales of rough times and violence. 
Picture this a young Charles getting into scrapes, threatening people, and even breaking a sergeant's arm during a brawl. He was no stranger to confrontation, and his fiery spirit extended beyond the set. There was that memorable incident with the director, leaving the poor guy gasping for air after a heated disagreement. The man wasn't just tough on the screen, his reputation echoed in real life. Now, imagine Michael Gordon Peterson, Britain's most notorious prison hard man, needing a new name in 1987. Guess what he chose? Charles Bronson. That name carried serious weight back then, and even Esquire magazine quoted Bronson saying he'd take down anyone threatening his family. It caused quite a stir, with even Johnny Carson, the famous TV host, couldn't resist asking Bronson about it. And you know what Bronson said? Straightforwardly, because that's what I said. However, Charles wasn't exactly best buddies with the he press. He found their questions too probing and film critics? Well, he didn't think much of them either. According to him, they didn't even pay to see the movies they criticized. Roger Ebert, a famous critic, once noted something intense in Bronson's eyes, hinting at a capacity for violence. When it came to dealing with people who rubbed him the wrong way, Bronson didn't hold back. He had run-ins with directors, openly criticizing them. Nicholas Jessner, the director of one film, felt the heat of Bronson's words. There was even a joke about giving him a good shake. His wife, Ireland, knew about his fiery temper and laughed about it on a TV show. Bronson's clashes with directors were no secret. He found most of them difficult to work with, citing what he called Hollywood nonsense. Directors who crossed paths with him often had amusing tales to share about their encounters with the tough actor. Don Siegel, who directed Telep, recounted a funny incident involving Lee Remick, who was scared to touch Bronson's face in a scene, thinking he might bite her. In Walter Hill's film Hard Times, Bronson played a gritty fighter during the Great Depression alongside his wife, Ireland. Hill remembered Bronson's impressive physical shape for his age, though his stamina suffered due to his smoking habit. There was some tension over editing Ireland scenes, but Hill and Bronson eventually reconciled, showcasing Bronson's hot and cold temperament. Even Sean Penn, who directed Bronson in The Indian Runner, found out firsthand about Bronson's preferences for his character. Bronson was reluctant to have his character die on screen, fearing it might disappoint his Italian fans. And yes, even Billy Crystal had an interesting encounter when he sent Bronson the script for City Slickers. Bronson called him up, furious because his character died in the script, reminding Crystal that Charles Bronson doesn't die in movies, referencing his famous Death Wish series, The Legacy of Death Wish. The collaboration between Charles Bronson and Michael Winner in marked Death a significant Wish. milestone, propelling Bronson not only as a powerful force in cinema, but also igniting lively debates on the issues of violence and the ethics of vigilantism. This film, where Bronson portrayed Paul Kersey, an architect in New York turned vigilante after a family tragedy, challenged Hollywood heavyweights like Clint Eastwood, Burt Lancaster, George C. Scott, and Frank Sinatra. It showcased the divisive and provocative nature of the film, bringing attention not only to the character but also to Bronson's personal life, international relations, and his lasting impact on the history of Hollywood cinema. The decision to cast Charles Bronson in the lead role of Death Wish encountered opposition from his agent, Paul Connor, who initially encouraged Bronson to decline the part due to concerns about the potential impact of the film on audiences. Despite ethical considerations, Bronson felt conflicted about the character, initially thinking someone like Dustin Hoffman might be more suitable. Here's where Michael Winner, the director of Death Wish, played a critical role in convincing Bronson to accept the challenging role. Winter continuously reassured Bronson of the project's value, even revealing that Bronson was ready to take on the role, not just for the film, but also for the opportunity to embody the vigilante spirit. When asked if he wanted to be part of the film, Bronson responded with a sardonic statement. However, Winter redirected his attention towards the film, affirming Bronson's satisfaction with the role through a statement full of humor and cynicism. Death Wish, released on July 24, 1974, was not just a box office success, 
earning $22 million against a production budget of only $3.7 million. It was a work that sparked controversy and challenged ethical viewpoints. Brian Garfield, the author of the 1972 book on which the movie was based, expressed concern over choosing Bronson for the role, believing that his tough guy image would immediately suggest the use of violence. Garfield also voiced worries about the film's potential to encourage vigilantism in real life. Initially envisioning Death Wish, under the direction of Sidney Lumet with Jack Lemmon in the lead role, Garfield's concerns were dismissed by Winner, who accused him of hypocrisy, pointing out that a story about extreme vigilantism would naturally be portrayed through a violent film. An artist. Back in 1990, tragedy struck when Bronson's beloved wife, Jill Ireland, succumbed to cancer. Heartbreakingly, her memoirs were transformed into a film, with Jill Clayburgh portraying Ireland and Lance Henriksen stepping into the shoes of Bronson himself. Now, you'd assume most would be touched by such a tribute, right? Well, not Bronson. He was downright upset about it, even contemplating taking those filmmakers to court. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Bronson's on-screen toughness seemed to bleed into his real life. He had a knack for spinning wild stories about his past, making it sound like he was even more formidable off-screen. Tales of fights and knife-throwing prowess echoed through the air. However, as it turns out, those stories weren't exactly true. It seems he was just adding a dash of spice to his own legend, as he never ended up behind bars. People who knew him off-screen insisted he was nothing like the violent characters he portrayed in movies. Now, let's talk about some quirks that added layers to the enigma that was Charles Bronson. Despite his tough exterior, Bronson had an interesting habit he never shook hands with people. Some chalked it up to arrogance, but the reality was quite different. Bronson was actually scared of getting sick, avoiding handshakes to steer clear of germs. Some even speculated he might have had a touch of OCD, but that's just another assumption. But that's not the end of the tale. Bronson harbored another fear that clung to him throughout his day's fire. It influenced how he lived, especially during the shooting of Death Wish in 74. Bronson made sure to stay in hotels with rooms no higher than the second floor, all because he was dead set on ensuring everyone could escape safely in case of a fire. Quite a sensitive artist, wouldn't you say? Surprisingly, Bronson was more than just the tough guy we saw on screen. He had his worries, just like anyone else. Behind the scenes, he was a lover of art, finding solace in painting and sculpting in his spare time. In fact, he preferred discussing his paintings over his acting in interviews. Even more fascinating, he painted under his real name, Binsky, to keep his identity a secret. And guess what? His artwork sold well on its own merit, without the fame attached. Uh, I know my grandfather used to do it, and I have an uncle who used to ride what they call blind baggage. Uh, do you know what blind baggage is? Yeah. Hooking and... Uh, but, but every third person you hear of doing it either actually had leg cut off or, you know, fell between cars or something. So it's a risky it's not thing. a good idea, boys and girls, what we're saying. <laughs> we used to jump yeah. on freight standing on a bridge that went over a river. Now, let's shed some light on Bronson's health struggles. At one point, he needed a new hip. And eventually, he made the tough decision to retire from acting due to his declining health. In 2003, at the age of 81, Bronson left this world, battling problems with breathing and lung cancer. Despite his health battles, Bronson was a family man at heart. He had multiple children, including Zuleika Bronson, Tony Bronson, Susanna Bronson, and Katrina Holden Bronson. However, there's an interesting twist to this tale. Katrina, although part of the Bronson clan, confirmed that she was adopted and not Bronson's biological daughter. Nevertheless, she found success as a film director, carving her own path in the industry. But let's talk about something that truly touches the heart. Amidst his wealth and fame, the most precious legacy Bronson left behind was a painting called Scoop Town. This painting, cherished by Harriet, was a memento of Bronson's past that held immense sentimental value. Despite his tough exterior, Bronson was a dedicated family man, raising not only his biological children, but also embracing stepchildren from his second marriage. Katrina, his adopted daughter, found her place in the Bronson family and pursued a career in acting and filmmaking, following in her father's footsteps. 
In August 2003, the world bid farewell to Charles Bronson, an icon of toughness on screen. But let's not forget he was much more than the characters he portrayed. His legacy as a devoted family man and a multifaceted individual will always be remembered. Share your thoughts in the comments and ensure you subscribe for more captivating video updates.